always a pleasure to speak to him and he seems to be on a writing spree, former National General Secretary of the BJP and senior RSS leader Ram Madhav Ji. Namaste. And once again, we are sitting Amne Samne having a conversation. But this is also at a time when India has shown the world what they think is impossible, we can make it possible. A hundred billion doses and still counting. Yes, it is uh, a great achievement from, uh, I mean, uh, many standards. One is, of course, at a time when many countries, including the developed countries, are struggling with what we call as vaccine hesitancy. Mm. People refusing to take vaccines, educated people for various, including religious reasons, refusing to take vaccines. Countries like America, even, they are facing this problem. Uh, whereas in our country, uh, we have very successfully convinced our people, put proper systems, healthcare systems in place to reach the last man on the street. Uh, it, it shows uh, the efficiency of our system at one level. The, the trust that uh, you know 1.3 billion Indians have uh, reposed in the government, in the leadership at another level, that has resulted in this massive achievement. We all know that there were many skeptics in our own country mm. also. Mm. Uh, some deliberately calling it a BJP vaccine yeah. and uh, trying to discourage people I even in spite of all such uh, you know misdirected uh, attempts by certain politicians people uh, finally uh, trusted the vaccines trusted the government trusted the leadership mm. so it it uh, goes to the credit of our leadership our healthcare establishment and most importantly the people of this country Mm. that has resulted in such a wonderful uh, you know, achievement. Mm. Having said it, long way to go yeah. because two doses have to be administered. Uh, we are still uh, mm. s uh, some distance from that uh, goal. Yeah. But if this trend continues, I am sure very soon we will complete the targets. Yeah, let's hope so. But uh, it also ties in with what you said, you know, going up to the last mile. And Dean Dayal Upadhyay talked about Antyodhya and you've also written humanism. So, is this an example of how we can uh, look at uh, human beings and working towards society at large and rising above us a, a particular uh, narrative driven by religion? Most important thing that even Honorable Prime Minister has highlighted in his address to the nation today was that the system did not allow for any prioritization, any VIP preference and all that in this process. Mm. Actually, the needy were first identified. For example, if you remember initially, yeah. the doses were given to those above 60 years of age. Mm. Then they were brought to middle-aged people and all that. Very scientifically, keeping the need in mind uh, in a very non-preference mode, mm. treating everybody as equals, this uh, whole process was conducted. That's exactly what uh, you know the humanist approach of Dindyalji meant. Mm. That's what he meant uh, when Dindyalji talked about Antyodaya. Yeah. Uh, that was what he meant. The last man should also have equal status as the first man uh, in the chain of uh, the society. But then how does that tie in with Hindutva and the Hindutva paradigm? That's your latest book. So le le let's get into uh, <laughs> that. Yes, look, uh, Hindutva can be understood in many different ways. Some people misunderstand it. Some people see it as fascist. Some people see it as anti uh, of a few religions, communal, etc. Mm. In fact, it is integral, that means it is inclusive, it is humanist, that means it has humanism at the center of the whole philosophy. At this juncture, people must understand that you know before you want to dismantle it, yeah. you know, there <laughs> were efforts to dismantle Hindutva. First of all, understand what Hindutva is all about, mm. then talk about dismantling. Mm. But Hindutva is then seen as from the prism of the RSS, Hindutva is seen from the prism of the Hindu Mahasabha and Veer Savarkar and how they propagated Hindutva and it was all about Hindus and it was anti-Muslim and it was anti-Christianity, it was anti-conversion. Now, dismantle Hindutva campaign was a very deliberate and mischievous attempt at uh, further distorting and maligning a genuinely Indian nationalist uh, movement in this country. It's another matter that those who wanted to dismantle Hindutva by organizing a big, uh, you know, conference, seminar, etc., they have themselves fallen flat in their efforts. 
there were no takers for that. Mm -hmm. But the most important question that you asked about Hindutva, yes. which Hindutva you are talking yeah. about, you must remember that globally, mm -hmm. you take any philosophy, any ideology, it has shades. Yeah. Do you know that there are 16 types of liberalism in the world? <laughs> Do we know that there is no one Marxism? Correct. Marxism of Leninist version is different from Marxism of Marxist version from Maoist version. There can be shades, mm -hmm. but core principles remain the same. Mm -hmm. In our case also, whether it was Savarkar or it was Hindu Mahasabha or for that matter RSS, BJP, Sangh Parivar, we always believed in the Sanatan and in the ancient value system of this country mm -hmm. which we exposed as Hindutva. You know, sometimes this distinction is, is also sought to be mischievously made that Hindutva is different from Hinduism. Yeah. There is no such thing. You call it Hindutva, you call it Bharatiyata, you call it Indianness. And these days the fashionable word is Indic. Yeah, Indic, yeah. All these are one and the same. Yeah. We are all wedded to the core ancient philosophical value system of this country. Mm. But because uh, there is another term which I'd like to say, there are two aspects. One is Hinduness and one is Hindu Misya. So now what is Hindu and if you're saying Hinduism and Hindutva are all, somewhere boiled down to two aspects. One is Vasudeva Kutumbukam and the other one is Sarva Dharma Sambha. It is core philosophies are these when you say integral humanism. But the interpretation itself today is different. And how do you practice and preach or say that let's look at a Hindutva paradigm compared to an old, uh, as an alternative worldview compared to the Western worldview when we have pan-Islamism on the rise, when we are battling uh, assault on our faith, our beliefs from multiple uh, forces, uh, let's say Abrahamical forces. How do we deal with it? Uh, when we write books, we don't write only for those who criticize us mm. or you know, those who don't understand us. We don't write only for the sake of them. Mm. We write also for the sake of our own people. <laughs> they also have to have you yeah. know, broader understanding of what we stand for after all when we say Hindutva. Mm. So Hindutva has no place for any form of katrata, mm. any form of hardline approach. Mm. Uh, if it is hardline, it cannot be Hindutva. Hmm. Because why we don't even call it an ideology or we hesitate to call it Hinduism? Hmm. Because it's unlike isms or ideologies, it's not a closed framework. Right. It's the most liberal, most open, most inclusive idea. Hmm. The Hindu philosophy has never said this is the final word. Hmm. So we are an open and very inclusive people. Hmm. So that's why we don't hate anybody also. This is for us to understand. Correct. But then there are philosophies, there are beliefs, there are religions in the world which are today inimical to this whole idea of coexistence, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, world as one family, or Sarva Dharma Samabhav as you talked about. Yeah. They are inimical to these ideas. So when we propagate or propound these ideas, we also have to tackle those ideas which are detrimental mm. to this very inclusive thinking. Mm. That's where the question of certain certain uh, 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 certain streak of Islam, which is very radical, very aggressive, comes into picture. Mm. How do you deal with it? What we say is, first of all, appreciate the noble values of this land. Then, based on these values, not giving up on these values, uh, decide how to deal with uh, these kind of uh, you know tendencies mm. that come from time to time. You know, you talked about Vasudeva Kutumbakam. Do you know Hindus are the only people in the entire world who had courage to say that the whole world is one family? Yeah. No other faith in the world has said it. Mm. Even if they said it, they said it in the context that if you become my faith, then we are one family. But that courage, Ram Adhavi, is, mm. is also seen as weakness today. Exactly. So that courage should not come as weakness. Mm. So that's why while not giving up on those values, you need to be very clear about the dangers emanating from these kind of philosophies, mm. these kind of, you know, aggressive proselytizing and, uh, you know, radicalized, radicalist uh, jo philosophies are there. They need to be clearly opposed. They need to be exposed. In case you needed to use uh, any force to, you know, tackle those things, that's only at the government level. Mm. In our system, Tackling such forces is the responsibility of the state. Correct. Not every individual. Correct. 
you don't uh, take a talwar and go after somebody yeah, but, but what do you do when see now this is the conflict uh, or i say the conundrum that hindu or hinduness as a way of life or hindutva as a way of life versus hindus as those who follow a particular faith there is no definition of hindus as as a faith even in the un so when you see what is being perpetrated on hindus in bangladesh or what happened in bengal what happened in jammu and kashmir what has what is happening in afghanistan or in pakistan how do you differentiate definitely whatever is happening uh, against the hindus in bangladesh today is uh, heart wrenching it is highly deplorable and the government of bangladesh must take stringent action against those elements those radical elements which were trying to you know uh, attack the temples and kill hindus uh, in that country and all that and having said it let me say that the prime minister of bangladesh uh, has uh, ordered for stricter uh, punishment to those perpetrators of such uh, crimes uh, there are elements in uh, radicalized islamic world who want to uh, you know target minorities one from the religious gelatry but also for a very political reason hmm. if they find uh, uh, if they want to embarrass the current government they will use communal uh, schisms communal rights as uh, as a tool so both religious reasons and political reasons mix up in situations like bangladesh we expect that bangladesh government takes stringent measures to secure the interests of minorities so there are wherever whether it is in afghanistan or elsewhere that is the whole challenge the radical versions of islam mm. they are a danger to humanity when i say humanity as much to hindus as to muslims also yeah in those countries muslims also become victims in uh, afghanistan since you mentioned about afghanistan of course minorities have become victims sikhs hindus others but are not ordinary afghans victims yeah. are women not victims of this radical islamist ideology so radical islamist ideology is an enemy of humanity enemy of democracy but but don't you see the fact that this entire philosophy of acceptance not even tolerance acceptance that is hindutva is fighting against groups who are non accepting who are trying to enforce their will and if you look at the narratives you know one incident here gets amplified right up to the new york times or uh, uh, to the washington post but the entire aspect of what's happening in bangladesh what's happened with uh, you know hindus in jammu and kashmir just gets muted it's only those groups who are standing up for the for the cause of the minorities in these in these regions who are talking about it you get hand, twitter handles get suspended overnight for uh, those but those who are perpetrating false narratives they they their twitter gets uh, you know their handles get amplified so how do you talk about a different paradigm or a separate paradigm to exist when you are uh, you are met you are met with such resistance and a narrative which is wanting to put you down the so that liberal uh a uh, that uh, a, this liberal establishment in the west hmm. has a very distorted understanding are they really liberal uh, then uh, uh, that's precisely what saying the, the the so called liberalism of theirs is the most fascist version of liberalism hmm. they blame us as fascists they are the real fascists hmm. they cannot stand truth they cannot stand uh, other view point hmm. they want to silence you they want to spread lies so this liberal fascist establishment whether they are in the western media or they are elsewhere or you are talking about them i am also asking about our own intelligentsia in india mm. those who have uh, uh, so much uh, you know anger so much frustration over some incident in uttar pradesh they will be silent over what is happening in kashmir mm. when an innocent thailawala is killed no so called uh, liberal intellectual in delhi opens his mouth lutians delhi is silent mm. correct same about the plight of hindus in bangladesh correct so these kind of double standards this this type of distorted liberalism is also a bane of the intellectual world these need to be exposed mm. these need to be need to be tackled but when we are doing that we are tackling those malafide elements only mm. not the religions per se not the people per se mm. for example you are tackling with radical islam you are not you know opposing every individual muslim are you are tackling with distorted version of liberalism that doesn't mean you are anti liberal correct 
we are the most liberal people in the world hindus are the most liberal people in the world hmm. if this is the case then why is it and how would you call out those people who came to the streets and spread so much misinformation when caa happened uh, and today they are turning around and saying where is the notification <laughs> yes yes uh, so that's why i'm saying many times these fringe liberals today find opportunities to somehow come back and be in the limelight they use uh, caa like agitations for purely political reasons mm. at that time also at the time of uh, you know bringing that caa legislation also the government was very clear mm. this is not discriminatory mm. this is as per the tradition of this land mm. when refugees come here for decades on they remain here as uh, you know non uh, citizens no entity non entities responsibility of india to take care of those refugees correct so at that time also government was very clear that doesn't mean we are discriminating against anybody but these liberals wanted uh, some uh, you know uh, something to hold on to no i not just that they, there is this obsession to portray pm modi the bjp the rss as anti muslim yes yes so there is this obsession and it's been on for a while yes uh, again i'm saying that this whole uh, uh, enterprise of trying to project prime minister modi or bjp or sang parivar as anti muslim communal fascist etc today there are no takers for it in this country even in kashmir i can tell you today largely the society is against uh, radicalism against terrorism now that is the reason why the earlier understanding of terrorist is today totally gone today terrorist is no longer somebody wielding ak57 56 rifle and hiding in any uh, orchard or in any forest today such terrorists are no longer there hmm. they are not available there are no ak56 rifles available hmm. youth are not attracted to that but there are drug addicts there are ruffians so what these uh, pakistani elements do is drop small weapons like pistols hmm. hand handguns and use them to kill uh, innocent people mm. because they cannot even target uh, you know high value uh, targets mm. security is tight they cannot attack security forces without paying very heavy price mm. so today these elements do not have takers in the country country but yes you are right they find every opportunity to malign the country malign the government malign prime minister and mostly they find place in uh, outside uh, academic and media circles <laughs>